Hey everybody, welcome back. Kestova here with another example for you. Um, in today's episode, we're going to be talking about pin-connected steel members um, and kind of the checklist you need to go down in order to verify that your connection is adequate. Uh, so in today's example, we're going to be hitting all the points. Uh, we're going to be checking off that list and we're going to make be getting you feeling more confident about, about steel connections, um, specifically pinned steel connections. So let's jump into it. Um, so today, as you can see, we have basically we have a plate um, that is uh, mounted with uh, a single pin and there is a 10 kip load applied um, to that plate. Um, I guess before I get into our first one, I will clarify what the four are. Four modes of failure are uh, tension on the net effective area, and I will make a diagram of each of these. Um, you have shear of the net effective area, you have bearing, and you have tension gross. Let's jump into the first here. Um, so for tension net, and today we're going to mix it up, we're going to be calculating with uh, ASD, all right, liable stress design. Um, but I will show you uh, the fee in case you want to do LRFD as well. So tension net, you have a phi T equal to 0 0.75 or omega equaling 2.0 omega T. Um, the equation comes from AISC, uh, Steel Design Manual, equation uh, in Chapter D, Section 5. And this is equation D5-1, which is PN equals F. U times 2TBE. Now, what's happening here is your failure mode is happening along something like this. And you have your, your 10 kips happening that way. So that's your failure plane. And what we want to know is, uh, first, T we have, which is uh, 1 quarter inch. So BE. So what is BE? Well, BE is equal to 2t plus 0.63 needs to be less than or equal to just b in general. So um, b we know up here and b is equal to 1.5 so b which is equal 1.5 inches um, 2t 0.25, that's the thickness, plus 0 0.63, which equals 1.13, which is less than equal 1.5. Okay, so that's good. So BE equals 1.13 inches. So that means PN is going to equal FU is 58. We're going to assume uh, that this is a36 steel so a36 steel you have an fy equal to 36 ksi and an fu equals 58 ksi minimum all right 58 times 2 tbe is 2 times 0.25 times 1.13 all over 2 which equals 16 0.4 kip. We are okay because that is greater than 10 kips. Okay, our second failure mode, shear net, is shear on the effective area, um, and that's equation D5 2 in chapter D, section 5 of the AISC manual. Um, and that is denoted failure mode, it looks like this. So shear plane top and bottom there, and that's our 10 kip force. Okay. This here to the center line of the bolt is A plus D over 2. And phi S F equals 0 0.75 equals 2.0. We have an equation of Pn equals 
0 0.6 FU ASF. ASF equal to 2T times A plus D over 2. And that equals 2 times 0.25 times 1.5 plus 1 half equals 1 inch squared. Inches, inches, inches. All right. I'll keep track for you guys. So that means that PN equals 0 0.6. FU is 58, ASFY is 1 over 2, which equals 17.4 kips, which is okay, greater than 10 kips. Nice. Mode 3, bearing. And bearing is exactly what you would think. So you have this happening. Basically, you have bearing on that steel and compressing that local portion of steel. So if you were to take a cross section through there, that would look like this. So you have your bolt hole, and that would be the area that the bolt is bearing on, and that is equal to D, which is your diameter of your bolt, and then your thickness, T. Okay, and for bearing, phi equals 0 0.75, or omega equals 2.0. The bearing requirement uh, is given in Chapter J under Section J7, and you can see it in AISC equation J7-1. And that equation is PN equals 1.8 FY APB. You're like, well, what the heck is APB? Well, all right, we're getting there, we're getting there. So APB is just equal to the projected bearing area, which is just D times T, as you can see from here. Um, so APB is just that dashed area that I showed. All right, so D is one inch, T 0.25 inch. So equals 0 0.25 inches squared. All right, so that gives us everything. So PN is equal to 1.8, 36, so this is FY, so be careful of that. It's no longer FU, it's FY, times APB, 0.25 inches squared over 2, which equals 8.1 kips. Oh, uh, no, no, good. That is less than 10K, so that does not work out in bearing, so... Not good, not good. All right, well, let's check the last one. The last condition is tension gross. And that is going to be phi t equals 0 0.9 and omega equals 1.67. Uh, and this is just denoted in chapter D as well, section 2, um, under equation D2-1, which is Pn equals Fy. A, G. And this, what's happening in this mode failure is you have this bolt, you have this force, and actually um, the plate itself is either ripping itself apart in tension uh, either right here or right here through its gross section. So there's where there's no section loss in the steel, which is very unlikely, but we still want to check it anyway. Because what could actually happen where this may eventually apply is you actually have a real world condition where you have like that type of steel member. So you have this reduced section, and you have to t test that growth. So that's where it could apply, but for here today, we're just sticking with this. Uh, let's see, so we know that that is H. We know that AG just equals height times thickness, which equals four inches times 0.25 inches which equals one inch squared. All right, so that gives us PN equals 36 times one over 1.67, which equals 21.5 kips, which is far greater than 10 kips. So we're good there as well. Okay, so um, we're good on everything besides bearing we failed in when, you know, three out of four, not bad, but unfortunately, 
Um, it's not a game of horseshoes. It's not close that matters. It's about making sure that everything um, is accounted for and checks out. So unfortunately, this uh, criteria, this connection, does not work. So we would have to, uh, probably what I would do, uh, my professional opinion, would uh, either add a bolt or simply um, we need to increase that bearing area. So you could increase the thickness of the plate to say a half inch thick plate and then that would work out um, because what happened is if you had T equals 0 0.5, um, now PN equals 1.836.5 over 2, which means it doubles, so it gets you 16.2 kips, which is greater than 10 kips. So that would work out okay, so we'd be fine with that. Um, <clears throat> so there's a small fix for you if you needed to around the bat. Now, I do want to note at the very end here that uh, the pin itself is not covered in this example. Um, so that is a whole other set of uh, failure mode criteria that you would have to check. You know, shearing, prying uh, of the bolt, um, you know, failure of the bolt uh, to, uh, is just something else that would need to be considered because you can have a really, really strong connection and the bolt fails, or I should say you can have a really, really strong plate and your bolt fails, or you can have the opposite way. You can have a really, really strong bolt and a weak plate and your plate fails. So two cases that could happen um, and both always need to be checked. But today we are not considering bolt capacity. So who knows? Maybe that'll be for next time. Keep you guys hooked here. Maybe check out a new video coming up. So add that into the mix because that's something that's that's important. If not, if you're in a rush and do need to know that, um, you can find the literature on pins, uh, mode failures in AISC um, section D 5.2 in the 14th edition. And that's it for this example. So until next time, I'll see you guys. Thanks.